Hey, what's up guys? Well, what a crazy day it has been. Some crazy news with FaceTime and all of that buzz that's going on with Apple's major mess up there on that behalf. But amidst all this confusion and everything that's going on, we actually do have some awesome jailbreak news. Now, instead of a new Apple beta or a new Apple iOS release today, today a new exploit has been released by Brandon Azad. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to Twitter. This is what he tweeted out. He says, the A12, now with more kernel code execution, introducing voucher swap. Now, if you guys recall, a couple weeks back, Apple released iOS 12.1.3, which patched a ton of stuff. Now, multiple people, such as Brandon Azad himself, as well as, sorry, my bad, that's actually his real name right there, and Ian Beer, just major names across the board with multiple kernel level exploits patched in iOS 12.1.3. Well, this right here is the major vulnerability that we're talking about in today's video. Now, about a week ago, Sorry My Bad was actually first to the punch to release his information, his proof of concept project about this vulnerability right here. So some headway has been made. During this last week, it gave developers a chance to play around with the information about this vulnerability. But today, Brandon Azad has actually up the ante and has released his own proof of concept exploit. And the blog post is just fantastic. I'll link it down below or in your cards now if you guys want to take a look at it more in depth. But basically, this functions all the way up to iOS 12.1.2 as it was patched in iOS 12.1.3. And it works on A12 devices like the iPhone 10s, 10s Max, and 10R. So just absolutely incredible news. We actually have a working exploit now. And so let's go back, actually let's go back to Twitter right here. I have a couple other bookmarked tweets. Um, Jake James says, it's finally here. Daily reminder, if you're on iOS 12.1.3, downgrade. And if you're below it, stay. It's your last chance. And then links to this exploit. So just absolutely incredible news. Pwn is already on the same page as well. If you're on iOS 12.1.3, save blobs and downgrade. Again, if you guys want to downgrade tutorial to either 12.1.1 or 12.1.2, I will link it in your cards now or down below in this video's description. So basically, if you're on 12.1.3, definitely downgrade. If you're anywhere else, just stay right where you're at and save blobs. Now, there's also some major news pertaining to an iOS 11.4.1 jailbreak as well. Not only will this exploit by Brandon Azad potentially be able to be used for an iOS 11.4.1, 4.1 jailbreak, but some other major news directly from Tim Starr. It sounds like he's released his own iOS 11.4.1 exploit as well. Unfortunately, this one's only going to work on headphone jack devices like the iPhone 6s and below. Now, it sounds like from the Reddit thread, Pwn to Own has actually already taken a look at this exploit and he's having some trouble with it, but it sounds like he might be able to pull it through and actually get it to work um, for an 11.4.1 jailbreak. So, Either with this exploit or the one that was just released by Brandon Azad, definitely one of these guys is going to work for an 11.4.1 jailbreak. So if you've held out on that firmware, just stay there, just be patient, definitely save your blobs so you will have a chance to update to iOS 12 when a jailbreak comes out for that firmware. So this is just incredible news, guys. This is an awesome step towards an iOS 12 jailbreak. While we have some disappointing news with FaceTime, some positive light can be shed by Pwned Own saying a Cydia substrate extension may actually be able to patch this major bug. That is, if Apple doesn't just revoke this feature on pre-iOS 12.1.4 or something like that. Now, this whole topic right here is almost enough for an entire separate video, but I'll try to give you guys a summary real quick. Basically, people found that if you add yourself to a group FaceTime call when you're calling somebody else, once you add yourself, then it actually connects the call to the other person, allowing you, the sender or the caller, to actually hear the audio of the person receiving the call, even if they didn't answer yet. So that is just crazy. That is a major privacy bug right there. And it affects all current iOS versions. And that being the case, it's likely either later today 
or later this week that we're going to see a major update pushed by Apple, something along the lines like iOS 12.1.4 to patch this major FaceTime bug officially. And I'm really surprised Apple didn't push that fix this morning. Um, they did disable group FaceTime on the server side of things. So that service is temporarily disabled, but again, it should be back online once a patch is released. Again, it's really uncertain at the time if group FaceTime is now only going to work on this newer update that they push. In my opinion, that is what I'm guessing they're going to do and just disable group FaceTime on iOS 12.1.3 and below. But we'll have to wait and see. I will update you guys when that update is out. But again, for everyone in the jailbreaking community, you won't be able to update to this new firmware that Apple's just about to release to patch this FaceTime bug as the new firmware where whatever it be, say 12.1.4, is going to include all the security patches that iOS 12.1.3 has. And that, guys, is what is super incredible in today's video. The exploits for iOS 12.1.2 and below are now finally being released. This is the first major step towards an iOS 12 jailbreak, and the community is just raving. I'm super excited for an iOS 12 jailbreak. Let me know down below if you guys are as well. Well, since Pwn to Own on Twitter stated that pretty much everybody should save their blobs, I will have to agree, and I really just wanted to take the end of this video to refresh and remind everyone how to do that, or if you're new to jailbreaking, exactly what this is and why it's a good idea. But first, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it. It's super simple. Unfortunately, you guys will need a computer if you aren't jailbroken currently. Um, if you're jailbroken currently, you probably know how to save blobs on your phone. So basically, just connect your phone up to your computer right here. That's all we need to do on the phone side of things. Then we can actually go over to the computer. We can trust the connection with an iTunes right here and then also trust it on your phone right here and enter your passcode if you have one. I have a super simple passcode, as you guys can see. Well, once the phone comes up in iTunes, you can actually go ahead and navigate into the phone settings once it pops up right up here in the top left. I don't wanna to update to 12.1.3. Like I said earlier in this video, do not update to 12.1.3 or 12.2 beta one or 12.1.4 or whatever patch Apple is going to provide for this FaceTime bug. Just don't update, just stay exactly where you're at. Hit cancel out of that. Basically where you wanna look is right here where it says serial number. You can just click a couple times right here and copy this ECID number right there. You can just select copy. Now again, this website will be down below or in your cards now. So once you're here, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this so we can see it a little easier. Well, that's pretty big, but we can see it now. Basically, all you have to do is enter that ECID. We can go ahead and paste that number in right there. Again, this is for your specific iPhone. It's not for anyone else's iPhone. It has to be for yours, and it has to be for every device you own if you're doing it for multiple. So basically, just enter that ECID number. You can select your iPhone, whichever one you have. Now, the only tricky part here is really if you have the CMDA or GSM version, as typically a lot of them have multiple um, like iPhone 10, 10, 3, or iPhone 10, 10, 6. And again, the way you can check this also is if you're in iTunes, you can just go back to iTunes right here. And I believe if you click this once more, uh, oh yeah, model identifier right there. So just keep clicking through until you see it. I have model identifier 10, 6 right there. And I guess we already have the ECID, so we don't need to go back and get that one more time. Um, so once we have our identifier, once we have our ECID, then we can go ahead and select this. I am iPhone 10 6 right there. And then you can click I'm not a robot right there. All right, so once you've confirmed you're not a robot, then all you have to do is click submit right down here. This, once you get to this screen, you are all good. And you can actually access your blobs right down here on TSS Saver right here. And as you guys can see, I've been saving my blobs for quite some time. I have them all the way back for iOS 11.2. Granted, you can't downgrade to any version of iOS 11, even if you have your blobs saved. Now, typically these are useful if say you're jailbroken on 11.3.1 or even 11.1.2. You can use these blobs for iOS 12.0.1, 12.1, 12.1, 1.1 or 12.1.2 to upgrade to these firmwares 
after their signing window has closed. That is the most common use of blobs. Um, now, if something like a non-setter comes out for iOS 12, if you're on iOS 12.1.2 and for whatever reason want to downgrade to 12.0.1, that may be possible. Again, it is pretty finicky. There are a lot of requirements to be in place, and you have to check a lot of things to make sure your restore goes off successfully. But in most cases, to use blobs, you have to be jailbroken or there has to be a non-setter for your specific firmware that you're currently running in order to use these blobs. Granted, as you guys can see, it only took a couple minutes to set this up, and now your blob Blobs will be saved automatically in the background. You don't have to do anything. And for every new iOS version that comes out, your blobs will automatically be saved now. And so in the rare chance that you might need them and that you can use them, they're at your disposal. So it's just a great idea to have as a worst case, last resort backup plan. My only experience with blobs really is I used it on my iPhone 10 to update from iOS 11.1.2 to 11.3.1. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be able to use them in the near future to update from 11.3.1 to 12.1.2 or 12.1, whichever is the most stable for the new jailbreak that's going to be coming out relatively soon. Anyway, guys, really no ETA on when this jailbreak is going to come out. Unfortunately, we're not quite to that step. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, definitely give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to stay updated with the latest jailbreaking and iOS updates. Anyway, guys, I hope to catch you guys real soon, but until next time, this is Tony signing out.